Bob Hayden. I'm the uh, police chief of Brockton. Um, present with us at this uh, news conference is uh, Mayor Bill Carpenter, District Attorney Tim Cruz, Major Anthony Thomas, Troop B commander from the state police, and uh, Captain Scott Warmington, commander of the state police attached to the district attorney's office, and uh, Lieutenant Detective Paul Bonanca. Uh, who are assembled here to answer any of your questions and talk about uh, some of the uh, trends that we're seeing in Brockton and some of our plans to uh, uh, try to do a, a better job. First thing I'd like to say is I, I couldn't expect the Brockton Police Department to do a better job or work harder than they're doing right now. And quite honestly, some of these incidents that we've had over the last few days have been unpreventable. Uh, one was an assassination. I watched the tape simple assassination in a bar room. Uh, a couple of the other ones happened to happen in Brockton, but uh, could have happened anywhere else. And um, I'm going to ask Lieutenant Bonanca to approach the podium and tell us some of the, give you some bullet points on what we're trying to do to uh, restore the confidence of the citizens and to make sure that they, that what we're doing is out in the open and, uh, and um, transparent. Paul? Chief, I'm Detective Lieutenant Paul Banaka, the Night Detective Supervisor, and I'll uh, be talking about some of the uh, plans that we have in place as uh, we go forward. Uh, right now, uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to increase the hours and coverage of the uh, Brockton Police Gang Unit, specifically into the late night hours in high crime areas. We're going to be increasing our uh, detectives and uniform patrols uh, to bolster the force into the late night in high crime areas as well. Uh, also, we're, uh, we enjoy the relationships and we're going to be increasing our partnerships with the various divisions of the Mass State Police, Plymouth County District Attorney's Office, the Plymouth County Sheriff's Department, and our partners uh, with the federal agencies. And also under uh, Chief's Hayden direction, uh, we have reached out to the Boston Police, uh, specifically their gang unit. And that's with the hopes of uh, sharing information and intelligence as we look forward to developing that additional partnership. Uh, which will uh, benefit the city of Brockton. Uh, if there's any questions uh, before I give the podium to uh, Mayor Carpenter. Uh, if not, I'd like to introduce the uh, mayor of the city of Brockton, uh, Mayor Bill Carpenter. Thank you, Lieutenant. I just want to take a minute to outline uh, some of the initiatives that we're taking to support Chief Hayden and the Brockton Police Department. I uh, Later tonight in front of the city council, uh, Finance Committee, there will be a request from me to transfer $75,000 into the Brockton Police Department overtime account. I had already filed that request last week. Earlier today, I filed a request for an additional $95,000, again, to be transferred to the Brockton Police overtime account. Uh, this is to give Chief Hayden the ability and the flexibility uh, to deploy his uh, his officers where they're most needed, uh, both to uh, prevent crimes and to solve crimes, and particularly, as the lieutenant mentioned, targeting um, late night hours, weekends, and high crime areas. The, um, the total request of $170,000 is in line with uh, the amount of overtime funding that was approved by the council last week uh, for the fire department, and I believe is uh, very necessary. Uh, the motorcycle patrols are coming soon. Uh, I want to make sure that we're not taking officers off of other duties to get them on the motorcycles. Uh, so part of this money will be used for the motorcycle patrols. All of the additional overtime funds will be dedicated towards additional patrols. And I'll leave it to the, the chief and his professionals to best determine how to deploy those uh, resources. Also this week, I will be forwarding a proposal to the license commission at the suggestion of the Brockton Police Department and the Massachusetts State Police to require video surveillance in all establishments serving alcohol. Uh, this video surveillance will be required both inside and outside. It will be required to be operational 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And it will also be required that that um, video will be always accessible to Brockton Police, State Police, and all county, state, and federal law enforcement agencies, 
and those video cameras will cover both inside and outside of the establishment. And we believe this will be a, another tool that we can offer uh, our law enforcement, both as a deterrent to crime, hopefully, uh, that uh, patrons of those establishments will know that every square inch is uh, on video, uh, but also uh, to assist in investigations and in the effect that uh, a crime is committed. Uh, we'll also be working with the police department, with the Brockton Police Department, to launch a new uh, highly visible text-to-tip service so that residents of the city anonymously will be able to text information to the Brockton Police Department. With this technology, the text actually goes to a server in Canada and then bounces back, so it ensures the anonymity of anyone that texts information in. Um, we do have a uh, we do have had a form of a text to tip. Uh, this will be newer, uh, far easier to use. It will be monitored in a different basis than it has been in the past. It will be offered in conjunction with a uh, a new iPhone and Android app that can also be downloaded to uh, provide information on an anonymous basis to the Brockton Police Department. Uh, the chief and I have already begun speaking to. Uh, Brockton property owners, particularly businesses and commercial property owners, asking them to voluntarily install video cameras on the outside of their uh, buildings targeted towards public areas, sidewalks, streets, intersections. And uh, we've already had a tremendous response. I think we've approached half a dozen business owners informally already, and every single one has indicated that they're more than willing to provide that. And the chief and I intend to go across the entire city asking property owners to install outside one or two cameras on the outside shining on public spaces and uh, intersection streets where um, we have the potential to get a couple hundred cameras installed across uh, across the city will be a, uh, a great asset to uh, all of our law enforcement agencies. Uh, and finally, uh, we are uh, moving forward with uh, part of our safe neighborhood plan and that is to eradicate graffiti here in the city. Um, I have a change to the city's nuisance ordinance in front of the ordinance committee now. And uh, tonight when I speak with uh, Councilor Ian Erie, I'll be asking him to schedule a hearing date for that ordinance um, that will add language to the city's nuisance ordinance, making it a violation for failure to remove graffiti within 72 hours. Now, we will um, dovetail that with financial assistance for property owners to help offset the cost of that. We realize that, uh, you know, in the graffiti situation, the, the property owner is much more a victim uh, than a perpetrator of a crime, uh, but we need responsible property owners to remove uh, the graffiti as quickly as possible. Um, you know, graffiti comes in a lot of forms, but certainly at least a percentage of it is gang-related. I don't want any of it in the city. And uh, I have allocated some funds through the Brockton Redevelopment Authority uh, to help pay for the cost of graffiti removal across the city. So we will be very proactively contacting property owners and uh, asking them to re remove the graffiti and offer assistance in getting the graffiti removed if, uh, if so desired. So I just want to, as the chief referred to, um, compliment uh, the Brockton Police Department, the state police, all the agencies here working in the city. I think they've been doing a tremendous job. It's unfortunate that we've had a couple of homicides over the past 10 days, um, but I do know that uh, all of the law enforcement agencies here in the city, led by the Brockton Police Department, are very proactively removing guns and removing drugs from the streets of the city. Uh, when an incident happens, that just strengthens our resolve uh, to apply even more resources and work even harder. Uh, as we will restore safe neighborhoods to this city. So uh, I appreciate the efforts of everyone here today, and I would like to introduce and give an opportunity to speak to the uh, Plymouth County District Attorney, Tim Cruz, who has uh, also been a great partner to us here in the city of Brockton. Mr. District Attorney. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Chief Hayden, um, and all the state police that are here, and uh, Brockton police. I just want to say, you know, just at the outset, that obviously working together is really what resolves a lot of the crimes that we have that occur here, not just in the city of Brockton, but also in the county of Plymouth. And by working together with the state police, the local police, our, our federal partners, DEA, ATF, uh, parole, this is really how they make the positive steps in the right direction, making sure that we can continue to clear these homicides. Both in 20, uh, uh, 
2012 and 2013, all homicides that occurred here in the city of Brockton and in the county of Plymouth were cleared. In 2014 so far, we've had four homicides, all of which have been here in the city, two of which have been cleared, two of which continue under investigation. But as I assure you, as I assure everyone, by working together, we will make a difference. And the individuals who have committed these crimes uh, will be eventually arrested, will be eventually prosecuted, convicted, and sent to jail. Uh, in the last three and a half months here in Plymouth County, we have tried seven murder trials. There have been seven murder convictions in the last three and a half months from various dangerous individuals who chose to bring their trade to the city of Brockton. We need to hold them accountable, and that's what I think that we've been trying to do, and I think succeeding in doing that. But notwithstanding the best efforts, we still have a situation that we must be dealing with by working together in a cooperative and collaborative fashion. Uh, I've seen nothing, uh, nothing different from this year than as I've seen the number of other years. Uh, people ask, is there an uptick, uptick in, in crimes? Right now, to me, it is the same, unfortunately. Any one homicide in and of itself is a terrible tragedy. And it's a tragedy to the people, it's a tragedy to the community. And therefore, it's our responsibility to make sure that we get in front of that, to remove these individuals who would bring that violence to the city of Brockton and to the county of Plymouth. We've been able to do that, we'll continue to do that, and to the two individuals that committed these last two murders at the Litton and Morabizu, we'll be getting them also. Thank you.